right, good afternoon. Uh, today, we are going to do nomenclature Armageddon. No, uh, we are going to be combining and organizing the things we've already learned. Uh, today, I'm really not here to teach you new uh, methods of naming things. It's recognizing how to name what we've learned when it's all mixed up. So how do I apply that? How do I apply this? How do I put it all together? Because uh, we have a test on Monday. We moved it. It was supposed to be on Friday. We moved that. Uh, so we have some things coming up that are going to be due. Some are shorter, some are longer. So just realize basically one thing is due every day for the next three class periods. Um, they are going to mirror what the test is going to be all about. All right? Our test will have 25 uh, names and they go to formulas. And we're going to have 25 formulas that are going to go to names. By the time we're all done, you're going to have done the names and the formulas three or four times, like the same one. So none of them are surprises. It's not like we never did that one before. Uh, we probably already did it. So uh, it, it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, if, you, if you're putting in the time, you're going to do really well. Uh, just because you have a perfect homework assignment doesn't mean that you've been putting in the time. It might mean that you're just getting your homework done. Uh, I strongly suggest making sure you do that. So to help you with that, the next two days, all we're doing is working on this stuff in class. We're coming around helping you, helping you figure it out, uh, answering your questions, okay? So Thursday and Friday, we're just doing nomenclature work in class. Um, so we broke these down into smaller uh, worksheets, but uh, got to stay on top of it. If you're going to come in tomorrow and only have what we did today in class done on this, it's going to start feeling, you're going to start feeling some pressure because the next one's going to be due the following day. So make sure you're doing some of that uh, tonight. A uh, couple quick reminders to show you what's happening. Uh, this is Canvas. So uh, I've been getting emails lately, uh, like counselors and students are trying to find uh, assignments to help get them caught up. And if you don't have the website already bookmarked, uh, you could just go, it's an obscure website called Google, and you type in Pulaski Chemistry. We, we have a deal with Google. We get like the first seven hits, big money. Uh, but any of those gets you there. But if you're in Canvas, uh, that you click on and it takes you to the website. And we are going to be uh, doing a little uh, more, being a little more proactive by putting all the assignments on or up in that chapter right away. So you could work ahead if you like. And every time you click one, it'll have that. And you can click that and it'll take you to the website. And right here it says submitting a file upload. If you'd like, I've been starting to notice more and more people are starting to click an assignment uploading it to Notability and they are wanting to do it on their iPads, you could upload it right to the uh, Canvas instead of handing it in if you'd like. So we're giving you that ability to do that. I know in a lot of classes you might already do that, but uh, just FYI, right? there's just one more way to, to know what's coming up. Always we have our schedule and all that. And I always update that. So even though your schedule says the test is this Friday, uh, the one on the link actually says it on Monday. Okay, so. That all being said, we're going to get going. So again, if you have the pre-made notes, great. If not, I would definitely, I was shocked last hour how many people didn't write a thing down or they thought that the back of that little sheet that I gave you, which we'll talk about later, was the appropriate place to write all these notes. And I was flabbergasted. Um, this, I am giving you the keys of the kingdom today. How do we take all the stuff you've learned, all your hard work, and now how do you actually finish it off? How do you execute this for your test? Okay, so... These are the three things we've been talking about. Covalent, ionic, and acids. And maybe you don't know those exact names. That's okay. It's how do you name each of these. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give you everything. My gosh, we're not going to redo all the notes. But I'm going to help you with uh, the main ideas, the big picture items that you need to have down. Okay, so first thoughts. Remember, it, this is hard to, to write down because I don't know how much to write or how little, but... You might have words, you got to go to formulas. You might have formulas, you have to go to words. So these are talking about both ways. Okay, so if you see prefixes, that's, that's a covalent compound. Well, okay, so what? Well, what we are going to try to get across today over and over again. This is the biggest, acids are their own, own thing. Bless you. Either you're doing prefixes or you're doing charges. If you can keep that straight, you're doing prefixes or you're doing charges. You can't do both. Maybe you'll come out of this ahead of, of where you feel like you are already. So it's prefixes. Prefixes do not cross. They come straight down. It's such a shame when someone says carbon dioxide and all of a sudden you see the carbon is one and carbon di, two, and di is two and the next thing you know you crisscross them. It's like, no, you bring them straight down. You do not crisscross prefixes. Well, how do I know if I'm supposed to use a prefix? 
if you had the formula first, and you got to give a name, how do I know I need to put that prefix in there? Non-metal, I'd even circle this. And that's all we're writing for this first top part. It starts with a non-metal. If it's a non-metal, I'm using prefixes. That means I'm not doing charges because they're not far enough apart from each other on the periodic table. If you're like, I don't know where the metals are, non-metals. Aluminum is the last metal on the table up here. You go at an angle, anything on that line and over are metals. So this little triangle right here, boron and down basically, more or less, are considered, they're kind of metalloid slash non-metals, but that's, that's that area. Those, if they're both from that area, they're too close together. You can't crisscross charges because they're going to have the same charge, which is a negative. So you're going to have to do prefixes. Okay. Ionic, that's where we crisscrossed. Greatest group in the world. Although they were crisscrossed with Ks. Um, I was just watching um, Pitch Perfect 2, this break. And uh, during the, uh, the Dragon Ninja um, acapella underground competition at the ending, the Germans are singing uh, crisscross jump. I'm like, yes, just keeps going. Uh, so we crisscross those charges. CCC, we crisscross charges. You don't crisscross prefixes. So either you're crisscrossing charges or you bring prefixes down. Okay. And how do I know that? If I'm going the other way, and again, we're going to do some examples, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And I really try to minimize this as much as possible for the known end. It's a metal. It starts with a metal. So all of this, it starts with one of those. I'm doing charges because I have two ends of the periodic table. They're going to have positive and negative charges. Acids, there's not a, there's not a lot to write. Um, starts with an H. So you know it's an acid if it starts with an H. And if it's already a name, it has the word acid in it. So it, it's not, it, again, these are just the, the beginning thoughts. Like, okay, this is, I am identifying that I need to do prefixes. I'm identifying that I need to do crisscrossing. I'm identifying that it's an acid. Okay, that's not too hard to figure out it's an acid. Now, what rules do I have to apply? All right, so remember, we had a first and a second. Like a first part of the word or a compound and the second part of a compound. It's kind of the way it went down. So let's talk about each of those. And what's nice is with these two, they're very similar. They're just a small little tweak. So general rules. You're going to do the full name. Carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. There's only one C. So you don't use a prefix. But if you have more than one, you do need a prefix. So if there's two nitrogens, it'd be dinitrogen. But if there's one nitrogen, it'd just be nitrogen. Okay, so you do have to remember that. And then the second one, this is all I have for here. Ends and I'd, and you always use a prefix. Always. You can try to summarize this to the most bare bones that we need. You can always look up our more uh, detailed notes that we've had. So, prefix if it's more than one. Second one, always a prefix, and then an I. Carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, diphosphorus tetraoxide, two phosphoruses, four oxygen. Whatever it'll be. Ionic's a little more complicated. I definitely couldn't put everything in there. There's so much to do with that. So uh, first, it's a full name. There's something special with some of them. Roman numeral if it's a transition metal. So if it's in that D block, right? And then SN and PB. Those are the two. So if you're doing the name. If you forget it, it's not the end of the world, but it would help a lot. Same one, we always ended in I'd. And now this is the only other thing I could think of. Can I try to be really generic here? If you have a polyatomic ion, don't forget, when we cross down to it, you need a parenthesis. Very important. Again, there are more rules to this and how the charges come up and all that, but. This will be a good guy. Last one are acids. Acids, as long as you can keep this straight, you'll be great. It's those that can't keep this straight, you get in trouble. It's the whole hydro thing. So when we have two atoms, looks like this, H and one thing. So H is one of the atoms. 
is, <laughs> this is the best way I can put it. It's hydroblankic. It's going to be something, hydro something ick. It's only four. There's only four of these. So if you're not sure, we've been telling people this today, I hate, I don't like this feeling because I'd rather you not guess ever. But if you're not sure, you get to an answer like, I don't know if I'm supposed to put hydro or not, don't. Like if you have no idea, I'm not telling you like, oh, I'm 90% sure I'm not supposed to or I, I am supposed to. Well, then go with that. But if you're not sure, there's only four. It's the four halogens. It's hydrofluoric, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, and hydroiodic. It's the only four. So most of them do not have hydro. Hydro signifies that it's just one other atom, which is, turns out to be a halogen. The other ones, there's three or more atoms. And this deals with polyatomic ions. And we're going to practice this a little bit today. So remember, polyatomic ions end in two different suffixes, eight or it. Right? So if you figure out that it ends in an eight, eight goes to ick. I ate something icky. So I would take off the eight and put the ick. Oh, it's sulfate. Oh, I put the ick. Now, it's not sulfic, it's sulfuric, but if you put sulfic, we'd probably be okay with that. Uh, nitrite. Oh, there's it goes to us, so it'd be nitrous acid. So it goes to us. And then the only other thing I could think about this is you've got to remember, if you have like a three negative charge, you need that many H's. If you have a two negative charge, you need two H's. If you have a one negative charge, you'd have as many H's. So the, the H just resembles uh, the charge. It has to offset that negative charge. Sorry, it's kind of a weird angle for you guys. Anything you can't see? I don't know if you can see. It says eight to ick, eight to us. I don't know if that's the point. You're really far out there. Look at all these open seats. I would do this, but it doesn't help. <laughs> I turn it. I dim the light. So this is our cheat sheet. Okay. All right. Before we move on, now if you're doing your own notes, this is easy for you. If not, if you're doing the pre-made, I believe there's a little title that says memorizing polytonic ions. I hope there's just a little space above. I need you to do just two examples. You don't need to write all the words of them about the right. Just two examples. Okay. There are, I'm going to give you about 20 more seconds, but I'll talk about it. Certain compounds naturally grab onto water. Just water attaches to them. just happens. We call them hydrates. So if you're like, wait, hydrates? Yeah, like being dehydrated or being hydrated, it deals with water. Yeah, a little different. But yes, you're right. So don't, you don't need to write all this. Hydration refers to water. It deals with water. So we're going to indicate how many water molecules are attached to a compound. So here are my examples. If you have the examples, you're fine. Like there's nothing overly complicated about it. So if I cover this last part up, this is legit of what we've been doing. So I want to talk about it now, how we would get the name of the beginning part. So if I just talk about magnesium chloride, I don't see, here's kind of a preliminary way of, uh, of addressing our little cheat sheet already. I don't see a prefix. It's prefixes or charges. Just don't, prefix charge, prefix charge. Which one do I crisscross? Charge. Crisscross charges. So I don't see a prefix. So the way I get how many I have of them, I must be using charges. So I need to look these up. What charge does Mg have? Plus 2. Cl has a minus. We've got to be careful. Let's re-evaluate uh, that. This is always 0, right? The first column is 0, so this is negative 1. So if I have a 2 and a 1, you don't bring them straight down, you crisscross charge it. So it becomes MgCl2, right? Okay, here's how the rest of this works. We're going to put a dot. What does that, 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 just that part mean? Tetra, four. And then hydrate's going to refer to water. This is what it looks like. And I think you'd be like, oh, MgCl2, the dot is just, it basically means with. It's not a multiplication. It's just with. You don't write with, though. You just put the dot. And then you put 4H2O. So when you see the word hydrate, you just write H2O. So this is magnesium chloride tetrahydrate. It sounds really complicated and long, but here's the normal compound, and it has four waters attached to it. That's all. So that's, that could come up. If it ever has the hydrate, it'll have a prefix with hydrate after it. Let's do the other way. We're going to name it. Again, this is the two ways that you're going to be responsible to do it. So I get BASO4-7H2O. 
I gotta name it. Okay. So first, BASO4. I gotta name that. Do I need uh, prefixes? Do I need Roman numerals? I'm, how do I do all this? This is this is how this starts to go down again because we've been doing worksheets where it's like you're doing this, now you're doing this, and now you're doing that. You can do anything you want. You just gotta make sure you're doing it the right way. So here's a couple things. One, that's a metal. BA is a metal. When they're really far away. That means that you're usually doing charges. Secondly, SO4, it's a polyatomic ion. Ion. Ions have charges. So I'm crisscrossing. Okay, so that means no prefix. So I'm not using prefix. So that means I'm just going to name it. So that's barium. Does that need a Roman numeral? No. Roman numerals are in this box, right? The D block and SN and PB. So just be barium. And then, what are the guesses here? It'd be sol, there's only two good guesses. Sol, fate, or it, right? Eight or it. If you see, good rule of thumb, if it's a four, eights have more than ites. If it's a four, it's got to be an eight. Because that's too big. It, ites don't have fours, for sure. Um, some eights have threes, but no ites have fours. So this is sol, fate. We'll go over this today again. I'll show you how. Hopefully it'll be a little easier. Then, prefix for seven. Starts with an H, hepta. hepta, and then I just say hydrate. Barium, sulfate, hepta, hydrate. You can look at that and go, oh, I'm out. Or just slow down and go, okay, fine. That's the name of this part. And then I just say a prefix in the word hydrate. So that, that's how we do hydrates. I think you can handle it. All right. So, all right. I want to talk about polyatomic ions. You've had almost a month. And for some of you, it's like, oh, no. I will start Sunday. <laughs> um, these are the things we gave you. And we had a little asterisk next to 11 of them. We said those are not going to be provided. So what I'm going to strongly suggest, this sheet is what I'd be using for the next week. It does not have any of the ions that are required to be memorized, so you can't use it as a crutch. I know how I work. If I even accidentally see it, I can talk myself into saying that I didn't. Oh, no, I didn't see that. I knew that one. And you, you totally saw it. But like, no, I just, I just saw a little bit. I, 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 had, I, I knew it was a four. Um, you can still use this sheet from time to time, but try. So I want to go over that a little bit uh, today. But like these are all the ones that we asked you to memorize. So nitrate and chloride and ammonium. And this takes longer than I was hoping. So sulfate. Phosphate, and there's the rest. So, um, so give me one sec. We are going to transition. You can memorize this through brute force. <coughs> um, there are things called flashcards still. It's weird. Uh, there are apps that do that with your phone or your, your tablet. Crazy. Uh, but I want to try to show you again how this all worked. So I, I cut this off a little short. We had, uh, well, I can show it to you on here. We learned in the past. We learn all this, and I'm not letting you write this down because you already have this down, but uh, we're going to do it right now. You can determine the charge by what, where they are, odd and even groups, and then we can determine the number of oxygen. So that's what we are going to be doing right uh, now. Okay, so I'm going to jump actually over to chlorate first. So if you have this, it's all pre-made. If not, you can easily make a list. So there are 11. Eight of them, all, if you can understand this process, you don't have to memorize these at all. 
But you do have to get to this point right here. When you see chlorate, you have to be able to say, well, that's a Cl and there's some O's. And it's the number of O's and what charge it has. Okay? So how did we do this? Well, this is in group 17. Okay? Where do I get that? It's from the periodic table. And what is 17? It's odd. So it's an odd number, so that becomes negative 1. Okay? So the only other rule now you need to know is this. Negative 1 eighths have 3. Negative 2 eighths have 4. So 1 and 2, 3 and 4. Okay? 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 1 eighths have 3. Negative 2 eighths have 4. So I have a negative 1. So negative 1s have 3 for their eighths. And then I just look. Yep, it's an 8. And I'm done. That's ClO3 minus. Okay? I want, to move, I want to compare and contrast. I want to show you how we, you would do each of these, though. This is all the ones that will not be on your sheet. Okay? Nitrite should start off saying, okay, N and O. <laughs> Group 15, odd. So it's negative 1. What did we just say? Negative 1, 8s have 3. Uh-oh. It's an I. What do ites do? One less? Right? Ites have one less. You ate, you ate something. You ate more. You got bigger. So, and I mean, you can, you can make it have a memorization of anything you want. Be like, well, I'm going to memorize all of it. I'm going to memorize it. Negative, negative two eights have four, but negative two ites have three. Well, oh, that's a lot. You're going to start adding a lot of things. Negative two eights, four. Negative one uh, eights, three. And then, I just know that eights are less than eights. So that one would be that. Okay. Moving forward. I know I skipped that one. Sulfate. I have S and O. Okay. So S. I look at the periodic table. I'm following the same rule every single time. This is group 16. And you don't have to have that memorized. You can have a periodic table. So 16 is even. So that's 2. Evens are 2. Odds are 1. So what do negative 2 eights have? 4. Am I writing 4? It's an ite. So, oh, shoot, it's an ite. So I go 1 less. So it's SO3, 2 minus. Are you going to do the hypochlorite next? I was going to do the chloride next, but if you want, I can do the hypochlorite yeah. next. It's going to kind of ruin my flow, though. Oh, yeah, just go with chloride then. Okay, I, was, I feel better. So I go to chlorite now. If you have it on the board right now, what is chlorite? Just based on other information. ClO2 minus. Wait, the charge never changes? The charge doesn't change from one to the next when they're the same beginning, when it's like chlorine or nitrogen or sulfur. Um, it's going to be the minus. Why is it one less? Well, because this was the 8 and this was the ite. But if that was the only one you had on the sheet, odd. Negative 1, negative 1 eighths are 3. Oh, shoot, it's an 8. It's a 2. Here we go, Simon. You ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I have hypochlorite. First off, still odd. But you get here like, oh, I don't know, and I didn't feel like I studied this one, or this one was confusing to me. Well, the hypo has to do something. So what does the hypo do? It affects oxygens. So if you go, oh, it adds one. Great. If that added one, you'd have, it, it, you'd have a 2. Well, no, 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 it's going to add 1 to this. Fine. It brings that up to a 3. That already has a name. So what do you think it does to the O? Does it make like the two O's though? If I had two O's, it'd just be called chloride, though. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. It could make 4, but... I guess my thought on that would be like if it was making more than the ite or the 